Every artist is essentially a storyteller. Any art form that endures only does so if the story it tells us is a genuine one. When it comes from a place deep within the artist and reaches out to you. A dance form, a song, a film is nothing without the tale that lies within. On Teacher's Genuine Stories Season 2, join me as I meet artists who compel you to listen to their stories. It's a privilege to be back on season two of Teacher's Genuine Stories. I am Rahul Bose, and I'm looking for rare and genuine stories told by artists who have braved all odds to tell them, whose work shows an artistic doggedness, which is what finally makes them endure. Our storyteller today is a dance entrepreneur, a choreographer, and everybody's favorite reality show judge. He grew up in a Mumbai chawl the youngest amongst eight children, and just knew forever that his life had to be about dance. His name is Terence Lewis, and his is a story I really want to hear. I don't remember a time when dance was not part of who I was. It tells the world who I am. It tells me who I am. When I dance, I see myself as being part of a larger cosmic story. And yet, it is also my story to tell. Hey! Oh. Hey, Terence, how are you doing? Very good, how are you? Good to see you. Well, good. Yeah, after a long time. Wow, you're looking... <laughs> funky. <laughs> Same as you. <laughs> God, 2003? Yeah. Jankar Beats? Jankar Beats, my first film as a main choreographer. I remember. <laughs> and what was that line that Pina Bosch once said? Um, I'm not so interested in how you do something. How you move? How you move, as or in what, what moves you. What moves you. What moves you. Yeah. So, obvious question, what yeah. moves you? I think it makes so much sense because uh, as dancers, we're always working on the craft, technique, line, precision, you know, the flexibility of that movement. But somewhere we forget that intent is more important because if there is intent in what you're doing, it becomes meaningful. Otherwise, it just becomes technical jargon. Terence, sir, uh, you grew up uh, not in the lap of luxury. You, are, you have reached where you have. It's very authentic. It comes from a very genuine space. Take us through the emotional milestones, the journey of your career? Actually, the first time that I, you know, uh, had my dalliance with dance was accidental when I was in school, first standard, first grade. And the teacher came around and said, who would like to participate in a dance competition? And nobody's hands went up. And I always want to be the kid who does things differently. I put my hand up, not knowing what I'm going to do. And then I just did some random thing that I had seen somewhere on TV. And I just won, and then I took part in all the other, you know, extracurricular activities. And then I just realized that, you know, I was getting hooked on because the stage became the claps, the applause, uh, became very addictive. The second milestone was when I was 13, I won a dance competition into school in Bandra. And then the judge uh, gave me the first prize and she looked at me and she just come around and she said, uh, listen, you may be very good, but you're the best or the worst and you need to train. So what did you do? So she gave me a scholarship to study dance for three months and that's all the information I had. When I turned 17, I was good academically. And then I stumbled upon a dance tuition that was paying me more than my actual students who were coming in and taking the lessons from me. And at the age of 26, that was my turning point where I said, okay, I'm done, I'm leaving this country. And I want to go and train abroad. That changed my life. The Terence Lewis before New York and the Terence Lewis after New York in terms of ideology, in terms of thinking, in terms of being with creative artists and allowing myself to germinate, you know, and really, grow came from there. 
After that, I came back. I, you know, started doing shows. I set up a school, and then it came to a point where, you know, I got, I was dancing, doing shows, stage shows, and I happened to chance upon this wonderful choreographer, like a Pina Bausch, who's very well known in Germany, Susanna Linka, and she happened to see my performance, and that's when she came down to me and told me that I think you have a spark, and I think you should train contemporary dance, and you should come to, you know, Austria, Vienna, and I'll try and see if I can get you work, get your scholarship. And that scholarship changed my life. How important is it for a contemporary dancer wannabe to formally learn the craft? Honestly, um, you learn through mistakes. And uh, one mistake that you should not do is assume that you know contemporary dance. Most people think that sometimes contemporary is all about making lines and shapes. That's modern. So they need to know if they need to let the arm go. For example, if I'm lifting my arm, there has to be an initiation for it. It just can't lift because you want to lift it. And there's a certain something called as a head and tail connection. So you need to have a head and tail connection for the arm to go there. And then you just can't say, I want to drop my arm here because I like the design of it. You have to let nature do it, which is the law of gravity. And then with that momentum, the hand has gone there and not just here. Fascinating. So you need to also understand the physics and the universal laws of movement. Or oh, let me ask you to take us through a typical process from the idea that Terence gets to a germ of translating that into a piece, and then finally deciding, yes, this is a piece that I want to compose, and then the piece itself. So the first disclaimer that I want to say is the creative process is a very, very long process because the answers don't come at the instant. So for example, today, I would like to show you something that I've just been going around in my head in circles, something that I'd heard on an audio uh, podcast. So. Terence is attracted by something someone has said which strikes a personal chord inside him. He responds to it artistically in the only way he knows how, yes. which is through dance. Yes. What does he do next? Uh, what I do is I get the team because I need it to be projected on somebody unless I'm playing that part. Right. And I tell them that this is my thought process. What are your views about it? Because it is the intent through which they will be able to feed that as the current to start working and feeling things. And, Good. and this process yeah. from this initial yeah to a finished Wonder, piece yeah. can take as long as? Three months. As short as? A week, 10 days. <laughs> today, 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 today. Uh, what can we expect? Um, I've made a piece of choreography, love and desire. Can you have both? Can you be monogamous? And can you, uh, you know, what, what does monogamy mean? And uh, can a woman love two people at the same time? You know, uh, what does she have to choose? Can love be inclusive or does it have to be exclusive? So all of that will wow. be explored. Wow, I'm looking forward to, uh, to finding a few answers from you today. <laughs> Thanks. Perfect. See you soon. Yeah, see you. Cheers. Cheers. Take care. And as she stands in the storm, torn, heart versus her head, will it be love or passion instead? Will they ever understand that if one has her heart, the other holds her hand? Love, passion, jealousy. Will they ever understand? Can there be three where only two can stand?
as she stands in the storm. Torn, heart versus her head. Will it be love or passion instead? Will they ever understand that if one has her heart, the other holds her hand? Love, passion, jealousy. Will they ever understand? Can there be three where only two can stand? Terence's dance form is a perfect communion with the laws of nature. This synergy that he has found with the external world and within his art form is what makes the story he tells a deeply genuine one. Words are not the only way to tell a genuine story. In fact, they could be the most unimaginative way to tell one. A rare performance like that leaves me inspired, happy and hopeful with the many stories that it tells you. So join me next time on Teachers Genuine Stories where I meet up with more such accomplished storytellers. I made a piece of choreography. Love and desire, can you have both? Uh, can a woman love two people at the same time? Does she have to choose? Can love be inclusive or does it have to be exclusive? <laughs>